to this presentation. Hopefully you can uh, keep your eyes up on the screen because we probably have the best room here and the best view. So what a, what a nice uh, room to have a presentation. In. Anyway, we're going to cover a few things in this presentation. We have 20 minutes uh, today, so I'm going to cover uh, a bit about the OCP contribution process. Uh, I'll cover a bit about a uh, previous contribution that follows that process, and then I'll follow that up with a contribution by Celestica. So we call this living on the edge of open networking is, is this track. So a, a bit about the uh, OCP contribution process. So this was introduced uh, back in October at OCP su uh, Summit. And the, the contribution process for hardware has changed a little bit where OCP has now divided this into a three-tiered process. Um, the concept is you, would, you can have a base specification, so at the very top, a base specification is something that um, is, is kind of generic and describes a product uh, more from a market requirements and directional point of view. The second tier would be a design specification. So this base specification would be more specific, would call out perhaps actual components used in that design. And then the third level would be an actual product specification, where that specification would go over how the design is actually implemented. Okay, so if you think about a very high level, um, three-tiered specification, that's the new uh, specification uh, process for contributions in OCP. That's not to say that someone couldn't contribute all three of those tiers in a single paper document and do it as before, but now we've broken that up into three tiers, hopefully to get more participation uh, and collaboration from people in the community. Okay? So today, uh, We'll be going over two things. So yesterday, if you went to the keynote sessions, you, you would have seen there was a contribution from Amazon Web Services, AWS, on a device called an Enterprise Edge Gateway. So they contributed what's called the base specification. So again, very high level, directional based on what a product should look like that fits into being an Enterprise Edge Gateway. Today, Celestica is going over our contribution which is a design specification. We're seeking OCP-inspired status, and we follow that base specification. So the design specification adheres to the base specification that uh, AWS has previously contributed to OCP. Okay. So a bit about where the product fits. So this is a, um, a picture that was out of that base specification. So the, the Enterprise Edge Gateway is not in, a, in the center of a campus environment. It's rather out on the edges or at remote networks, and it's the, at the edge of these remote enterprise networks. So you can see it in the picture here, and you can envision that a device living at the edge of this remote network would perhaps have to perform many functions, not only simple data packet switching, uh, but also providing perhaps power over Ethernet to connected devices inside this remote, this, uh, remote network. Perhaps it would have to have some kind of additional uh, technologies such as uh, cellular uh, connectivity for out-of-band management or perhaps uh, backup connectivity to headquarters. Um, perhaps this device would have to provide SD-WAN type of functionalities um, in this device as a gateway. So all those types of uh, functions are required to be supported by this edge gateway uh, type of device. So we'll go over what the design, what the Celestica design looks like that would allow all those functions to reside in that device. So uh, just to get into the design, it's a one uh, RU rack mountable design. Uh, this design is based on the Broadcom tr uh, Trident 3 X2 silicon. It uh, comes in two flavors as the base design, either a 48 port design um, with uh, four uh, 25 gig uplinks or a 24 port design also with four uh, 25 gig uplinks. The base design supports uh, max sec and has redundant field replaceable power supplies and redundant fans. So that's the, the base design. Then underneath that, you can see all the different options that could be built 
um, with this, this design. And these options are a build time option, so they're not frues that you replace in the field, but there'd be different SKUs that you can order based on the different functionality you want this edge gateway to perform in your network. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of talk through those optional uh, components and those optional designs. So if you look at those optional designs and how they um, might fit, here is a kind of a, a chart of the different options. So you would have, um, on each of the base models, you'd have an option for power over ethernet that you could order. You would have options for additional uh, high performance CPU modules. You might have options for LTE or 5G connectivity, and you might have options for embedded Wi-Fi uh, in the edge gateway. So you can see based on the, the two base models and all the options, very, uh, you know, many different orderable SKUs could come off of this design based on the use case. So now we'll just kind of look at the different components that make up the design and all the options. And all these are in the specifications. So, you know, we've contributed a actual paper specification that's about 30 pages long that goes over this product in, in much more detail. I'm just going over a few slides here with you to, to get the flavor of that design. And you can go out and read that specification. That should be on the, uh, the wiki page in the contribution database today. So the base design, of course, you have a main board. And that's either a 24 port or a 48 port main PCB board. You'd have this little I.O. board that uh, provides the um, Ethernet management port into the device, either an RJ45 or an SFP uh, is the management port. And then you'd have a, a board that adapts the power supplies to supply power to the main board. Um, so that is what would be included in the base designs. You could order that as a 24 port or a 48 port solution. And now we look at all the optional boards that are needed to make all those different permutations based on the features and functions that a customer may want. So we start with, if you wanted to order a SKU with power over Ethernet, we have a different power board that takes in uh, the 54 volts from uh, the power supplies for PoE and directs that to the ports and also converts it to 12 volts uh, for the main board usage. There's two optional CPU modules that could be ordered depending on the different applications you want to run on your gateway. So by default, the network operating system would run in the embedded processor in the switching silicon. So uh, either one of these CPU modules would be an option. So th there's an option for an Atom-based, x86 Atom-based class processor module, and also an x86 Xeon class uh, module. So either one of those two uh, CPU options uh, could be ordered. And for the uh, wireless type of connectivity that could be embedded in this device, you can order it with Wi-Fi capability, and that's shown here. It's an M.2 module you could put in, so this could be your Wi-Fi access point in addition to all the other functions you want to run in this design. And there's also an option for an LTE slash you know, 5 gig cellular module. So again, you could order this with cellular capabilities to be either your out-of-band management channel into the device or perhaps a uh, backup connectivity channel to headquarters if the primary uh, channel was to fail. Okay, so those are all of the, the different options uh, that you could order in different SKU formats in this device. Here's a uh, kind of a, just a picture of, of how this thing would look when it's all configured and the different PCB cards in there. Um, and how it's assembled. Here's a, just a front panel and a rear panel view. Uh, this shows uh, the max configuration. So if it had Wi-Fi and or um, LTE option, you'd have uh, up to six antennas on this design uh, to support those wireless connectivity options. You would have your, you know, your, your power over ethernet ports or, or not power over ethernet ports on the front. Again, depending on how it was ordered, your standard console and USB ports. On the rear, you can see the uh, field replaceable power supplies, two of them, and then the four system fans. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, one RU design. In this deck, you know, you guys can see, uh, you can download it. Um, here's the components that are used. Again, these are the max configurations. So these uh, block diagrams actually call out the actual um, part numbers of the components that are used. 
So again, we have um, you know the switching silicon here in the middle. This would be the Broadcom chip. We have some phi's out front here in front of that for power over Ethernet. We have those optional wireless modules over here, the Wi-Fi and the LTE, uh, LTE, and the optional COMI module here as well. So this is you know the complete design with all the options in this block diagram. And then there's a block diagram for the 24 port uh, design as well. So a different uh, variation of the Broadcom silicon. Um, doesn't require any FIs um, for the, the multi-gig support, uh, but also supports the uh, optional CPU module and the uh, Wi-Fi and LTE. Um, I won't go through all of these um, in detail, but you know, to have a, a contribution into OCP, you have to, to meet four out of the five um, OCP tenants. Um, openness, this is a, a truly open specification. It's a very efficient design in that it can be ordered in uh, various SKUs depending on the exact functionality you need to get out of this device, so it, it's, it's uh, efficient in, in, in those means. Um, sustainability, with its modularity, it's, it's set up for harvesting those key components at the end of life of the product, uh, so for, for easeability in that, it meets the sustainability um, tenant as well. How to get involved, you know, uh, with this, we hope this will generate more interest in the enterprise uh, connectivity solutions track. So I would encourage all of you, you know, that want to get involved to visit the website and the wiki and, and understand where the meetings are, get on the mailing list. Um, you know, this is one of, of uh, many different designs that could be based off of the Amazon base specification. This is just one way of satisfying that base specifications. There could be other designs that others bring forward that use uh, different components in their design. Um, so this is just one way of, of satisfying that design. And with that, um, I wanted to leave some time for questions, Q&A, so I'm available to answer any questions on our contribution. Uh, Michael Lane is here, our moderator today. He's from AWS. Um, he can answer any questions on their contributions of the base specification that was done yesterday. So we have about five minutes to go through any Q&A, so certainly anything you guys have for questions, we can uh, feel free to ask. Any questions? There is a microphone in the back. Um, also, I have a microphone here. If you, or just shout out a question and I can repeat the question. Yes. 